What up, all bro? What is up, all bro? What the <laughs> shit was that? So much energy right out of the gate, dude. I, I know, right? Calm down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What up, bros, and welcome to the All Bros Podcast. There we I'm, go. <laughs> I, I'm Jonathan. And I'm Caleb. And we are a couple of aspiring filmmakers that love to watch and critique movies, but also enjoy a lot of bit of the nerd life. Uh, this week on the podcast, we'll be talking about some adventures in hunting. Uh, we got a bunch of pops to talk about. Uh, we got some Star Wars. We got some friendly ghosts. We got some Marvel, some DC. We got a bunch of stuff to talk about. Uh, Blu-rays, we got nothing. Uh, this week, sneak peeks, nothing. What's in the box, nothing. Because, you know, COVID. And yeah. <laughs> I don't know what else to say to that. Uh, and then we'll be moving on to our main event of the evening, which will be our breakdown of our favorite movie of 2020 so far. Oh, good hell. <laughs> Actually, wait, no. No, let's take them out this year. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be uh, breaking down uh, personally our personal favorites, our personal favorite of 2020, Fantasy Island. So that, you struggled. <laughs> I know I do. <sighs> I think I've had a little too much caffeine and I'm starting to have a crash today. <laughs> so... <laughs> I had a bang this morning. Not a great idea. Gross. I don't want to hear about that. <laughs> no, it's an energy drink. Oh. What the hell is wrong with <laughs> you? <laughs> Whatever. You worded it that way. Well, I didn't think that your mind was going to go straight to that. <laughs> Shit. Apparently well, what else am I supposed to think? I didn't realize bang was an energy drink. Well, apparently you, you just don't. said you got a bang, and I'm like, okay, then. <laughs> <laughs> well, Shit. <laughs> Dude, I'm single as fuck. Do you want to say? You know what? Fair enough. <laughs> uh, all right. Anyway, before we make this a uh, little too dirty, uh, what do you say we get started? Uh, I say let's do it. All right. Hey, guys. What's up? This is Donnie, and I host the Adulting with Donnie podcast. And this is not the show to listen to if you're trying to be a better adult. I started this podcast as a way to offload some thoughts uh, that I have throughout the week. My topics vary widely every week. Movies I've seen, guns and gun control, sex, people that are stupid, why I don't care about celebrity opinions, TV shows, snowmobiling. The list goes on and on. I'm always taking topic suggestions from fans of the show too. So join me each week on Adulting with Donnie as I pour some bourbon and allow you to see the inner workings of the mind of a madman. Live free and rant hard. All right, so starting off with Adventures in Hunting, uh, for Star Wars, we got a, uh, I guess like a new line, kind of, of Star Wars? This is an interesting line. It is. So it's called Concept Series. And so the first one coming out, or at least the the first one being unveiled, revealed, uh, and this will be uh, for the 2020 Galactic Convention. Uh, it is uh, concept series Boba Fett. And he is completely white. Um, it looks like he has like a... It looks like he literally looks like he has a gas mask on. It does. He looks borderline stormtrooper. He does. And he I'm wondering does. if that's like the coloring that they were going to go with him. So this is just our assumption, but... It does say concept series, so I'm wondering if this is concepts of these characters. That's, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Like concept arts or just things that they were considering doing. Yeah. I mean, if that's the case, I really hope they continue with this because I think that's actually a really cool idea. I think that's a really cool idea, too. I think that, like, with a lot of different movies, like Marvel, yeah. that would be dope. Yeah, I really would. Um, so it looks like also in this line we'll be getting a does that say Star Killer? I thought that was a ship. Yeah, Star Yeah, it looks like it says Star Killer. So maybe this is like first rendition of Luke? I I guess so. I I honestly don't know. Uh and then we'll, uh we'll be getting a uh concept series version of Chewbacca. And uh, is this <laughs> kind of looks like a mix between uh, what is the word? An Ewok and Chewbacca. 
an Ewok and a Wookiee. Or yeah, it's it's an interesting mix. It gives me the t- Teen Wolf vibes. Ooh, okay. Like it has like the hairy face, pointy ears, yellow eyes, and then it looks like he's in armor holding a rifle. I'm also kind of getting. Remember uh, the Tuscan Raiders in Star Wars? Yeah, I'm getting that vibe too. Yeah, that's odd. <laughs> it's, very, it's very weird. Um, and then lastly, uh, it looks like Darth Vader holding a blue lightsaber. It could be a silver lightsaber that, too, because okay. it's not like super blue. That's true. That's so maybe not. it's just maybe they didn't or they weren't going to do light sabers. Maybe they were just going to do like space swords or something. I'm grateful that they went with light sabers. Yeah. Or it could just be he's on the dark side, so maybe it's just a dark blade. Uh, okay, yeah, true. Like, I know they have a dark saber, but... I mean, that's just that's just more of a black lightsaber. So maybe this is just, like, a dark saber. So maybe, it like, just... Instead of it, like, radiating light, it's just, like, black. Okay. That one's going to be interesting to see once it's yeah. like out. Yeah, let's uh, yeah, let's see how long it takes for it to come out though. Yeah. I I would I would want them to continue this concept series. I I would too. I think it'd be really cool for at least especially with movies. I would love to see what a... they uh do with uh Obi-Wan. Oh, <gasps> that'd be cool. I'd love to see what they would do with Obi-Wan. All right, uh, moving on, uh, we got uh, Mandalorian pop, and uh, this is the Mandalorian holding uh, the child. And yes. we're assuming that this is a Hot Topic exclusive, um, and it looks metallic? It's definitely me- metallic. Okay. It, it's, if, at the very least, it's chrome. Yeah, okay, yeah, chrome. That's, that's another word I was looking for. Um... I still haven't seen the show, so... Dude, what the... Shit! I'm sorry. Watch the show! Yes, sir. (laughs) Gosh damn it. I'm sorry. I apologize, okay? But, so this is similar to the the 10-inch figure that they were doing of the Mandalorian. Yes. So this is just a normal... It looks like it might... The, the chick that's holding it is holding it in her hands. So I doubt it's like a 10-inch figure. Are you sure she's holding it with both hands? It's not just one. Oh, shit. Maybe this is the 10-inch. Well, whoops. We suck. Yeah, and we already talked about it. <laughs> well, well, just in case we're wrong. Yeah. Remember this episode. I don't know. I have big hands. And that figure, I mean, I can hold it with both hands. It's just, it looks a lot bigger than that. Yeah. At least my my figure. No, that's got to be 10 inches. Because look at the, uh, how big the, um, what is it? The stand is in her hand. Uh, Okay. I'll give you that one. Mm. They should have specified that. They They should have. Anyway, moving on, uh, we have a uh, Big Apple, I think that's what it's called, Big Apple Collectibles Exclusive, uh, and this will be Brainiac. Um, I don't think this is from, like, I think this is from just the comics. I don't think it's from, like, any, like, animated show or anything. Uh, so this is Brainiac, the Superman villain. It very... V- I, I'm not su- super familiar with Superman villains. Uh, so I know who Brainiac is. I'm just not super familiar with like the different renditions of Brainiac. Okay. Like I know who Brainiac is. Yeah. Um, but I feel like he had a different look in the animated series. Um, I know he had a different look in Justice League animated series. So this very well may be a comic rendition. All right. All right. It's cool. Figure. It looks modern though. It does because he looks like he's wearing like a short sleeve shirt and he's like bulky. Honestly, this like some looks like something you'd see on a Teen Titans Go. Yeah, a little bit. 
I mean, it's a cool figure. No, it's a very the cool figure. The color choices were really good with this. Like, they, they used very bright colors, so bright green and a bright purple. Yeah, which it worked in its favor, so... All right, uh, next up we have an Entertainment exclu- entertainment, exclu- entertainment Earth exclusive. Um, and I want to say these usually always come to FYE as well, don't they? Typically, yeah. yeah. Um, and so this will be Wood Iron Man. We've already gotten a Wood in Captain America. so We haven't talked about him forever, though. Yeah, it's been a, it's, it's been a hot minute. Yeah. So, I mean, do you think they'll... Kind of odd that they're continuing this series now. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure we'll probably get a wooden Spider-Man, a wooden Wolverine. They'll probably go like the same direction they did with uh, the Target. Um, what was it? What was when they were uh, like not gold, but uh, they were like um, it was like oh the the chrome. No, they weren't chrome. Uh, they were. Um, Oh, was that like that faded metallic looking one? Like, like yeah, they kind of looked like gold and bluish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forget what it was called. I, I don't think they had a special name for it. I think those were just like an 80th anniversary. Yeah. So, I mean, do you think they'll do like the exact same characters they did for those for these? Because, I mean, so far, it's what they're doing. Yeah, they very same, well might. Same figures as well. Yeah. Same poses. Um. So, that is available for pre-order right now, right? Yeah, that's up for pre-order. Um, next up, we got a uh, Casper pop coming. Um, and so this is a common? It looks like, yeah, it looks like it's a common. Because yeah, you can order it from Entertainment Earth or Walmart. Um, and it's just him flying by with his hands up. I, I, don't, I don't know how to explain his pose more than that. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I, I kind of appreciate appreciated this one because like you know the ghostly form it kind of just ends with like a little wavy nub yeah i guess you could say this one actually looks like a leg it does so it's kind of like you could take it both ways where he if you look at it from a certain angle it looks like he had he's flying with his legs and then if you just turn it a little bit it looks like he's flying with like that ghostly nothingness yeah <laughs> i don't know what the hell to call I, that seeing this though makes me just want them to make a the ghostbusters logo in pop form oh my gosh that'd be so cool <laughs> right that'd, that'd be, be so cool but i want the original and then i also want the two one as well the no ghost logo two that would be awesome i want them both <laughs> um yeah th- yeah these are pretty damn yeah he looks pretty damn cool you gonna get him <sighs> probably not mm. I didn't know Um, so they announced that uh, they're doing a, a Best Buy exclusive steelbook for the original Casper I'm like okay yeah, yeah, I, mean, I, mean, I mean I'm gonna pick it up because I loved that movie as a kid I'm like yeah you know like I'll well, add Casper in my collection turns out I actually already have it on Blu-ray and I, and I haven't even <laughs> opened it yet <laughs> yeah I I don't remember watching Casper until I was way older what? Yeah, like I'm Ooh, pretty sure I, I was. I'm pretty sure I was over ten when I first watched it, and it just it didn't hit me how I feel Casper did most kids. Did you at least love the three, uh, the three other? I forget their names. The three other ghosts as much as everybody else did. I liked them. Yeah, okay. like it was a good movie. It just didn't hit. Like I, I haven't gone back to watch it ever since that like one time, but I know like people that do have a very nostalgic place in their heart for that movie, they watch it like all the time, and they're like, "Oh yeah, I'll try to watch it like every Halloween or whatever." I don't have that nostalgic attachment. I've never like thought about watching it every Halloween. I'll watch it like every once in a while. Like I feel when someone thinks of like a. Uh kids movie to watch every halloween i feel they would probably pick like hocus pocus over casper yeah i feel like hocus pocus is more of like an older kids movie that's true if i was going to put on a halloween movie for young kids i would put on casper fair yeah that's fair for older hocus pocus kind of does get dark (laughs) yeah anything any so if 
if the collective group of children that I was putting a movie on for was over the age of like nine, yeah, I'd probably put on Hocus Pocus. Okay. Anything below that, I more than likely it's going to be Casper. Would you, if or you were... even like, uh, it's the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown. What about uh, the Nightmare Before Christmas? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> nine and up for that one. Yeah, that one's a nine and up movie uh, too. <laughs> fair. That, that yeah, that's fair. Dude, that movie scared the shit out of me. <laughs> No, you know what this movie scared the shit out of me? James and the Giant Peach. Holy shit. <laughs> Dude, I still haven't gone back to watch that. <laughs> like, I I can't get myself to. I'm just like, nope. Not so I'm, I'm good. Like, I get Coraline vibes from that movie. Coraline doesn't scare me. I, I love that movie so much. Dude, I don't know what it is about the freaking button eyes. Okay, I'll Don't give you this. scare the shit out the of me. The other mother is terrifying when she like goes all full on spider witch mode. What? <laughs> okay, she doesn't go. Okay. Yeah, she, I'm she, not she, watching that ever. <laughs> <laughs> Have you not Sp- seen when she like uh, Dude, I haven't seen Coraline. Oh, you, ever. N- so you've never seen any clips, nothing. I've so I've seen the trailers for it. Ah, dude! No, no clips, no nothing. Like make it's just the it. idea of someone trying to sew buttons onto my eyes <laughs> scares the shit out of me, and I don't know why. But she lets you pick your color. No, <laughs> <laughs> that, that's not a selling point. <laughs> dude, but sir, I have no freaking clue what it is about, like. Like, I can handle freaking, like, Chucky, like, Jason, Hall- like, Halloween. I can handle all of those movies. I don't know what the hell it is about button eyes that scares so me. So you can handle it. You can handle Pennywise. But uh-huh. you can't handle Coraline. I don't know what the hell it is. Anytime I, like, think about going to watch that, like, anytime I've passed it on, like, when it was streaming, yeah, I get anxiety. Dude, it's such a good animated film. It's so good. Come on. It's I think it's a mixture of just like the button eyes freak me out. I am not a big fan of the stop motion animation. That look. It's Hurt not okay. Soul. I appreciate it. I appreciate it for like the artistic value that it has. Yeah. I I don't care for it because it freaks me out. Okay, so does Frankenweenie creep you out? Frankenweenie freaks me out too. Andy, you it's it's no it, I, it freaks me out, but I like the movie. Okay, all right. It's I. It's the same thing. I don't like Chicken Run either. What? <laughs> next, thing, next thing you're gonna tell me you don't like Walsh and Gromit. I'm not a big fan of Walsh and I'm Gromit. Gonna kick your ass, <laughs> <laughs> dude. It's it's like Shaun the Sheep. I don't like that style of animation at all. <sighs> like like I said, I can appreciate it for the artistic value that it has. I just don't like it. Okay, I can let Chicken Run go, but Walsh and Gromit? Uh, I can't. I, it doesn't do it for me, dude. I don't. It's like I I can appreciate the humor. I just don't like the animation style. So so have you like seen Walsh and Gromit: The Curse of the Were Rabbit? I have not seen Curse of the Were Rabbit, oh, but I've seen the so good like the original, like the first one. Oh, so a grand day off. Yes. Okay. So I watched that, and the it, claymation it's just, does get better. I'm just saying. I know it gets better. <laughs> I've seen more modern movies where that claymation. Well, no, I'm just is saying, like better. the way the uh, Walsh and Gromit looked in uh, a Grand Day Out. Uh, compare it to Curse of the Were Rabbit. Yeah, it's like freaking night and day. <laughs> yeah, like I I get that. It's just I'm I don't like that animation styles. It it's difficult to keep my attention with that. With it's just any stop motion. Like okay. I still haven't watched Cujo. I haven't watched Cujo either. Wait, is it Cujo? Or is it Kubo? Kubo. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, we're like taking a huge three sixty here to a killer dog. Yeah, that's that's not right. No, Kubo. I have okay. not watched Kubo. Okay. And have it... you watched any Leica films? I've watched a, a decent amount. Like I've watched Fantastic Mr. Fox. That's not Leica. Okay, I don't know what the hell's a Leica movie then. Leica Leica's an animation studio. Leica's 
So they've done Coraline, Paranorman, Kubo and the Two Strings, Missing Link, and the Box Trolls. Okay, we watched Paranorman oh, together. Yeah. Oh yeah, we did. I haven't seen the other movies though. <laughs> <sighs> Yeah, Coraline, the, absolutely the, not. The box trolls is kind of, uh, but the rest are really good. Well, actually, I haven't seen Missing Link yet, but yeah, I, 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 yeah, I, I the the stop motion animation just doesn't do it for me. I love it. I, but like I said, I can appreciate it for. I love the behind the scenes of it though. Okay. Like I love watching the behind the scenes of them doing stop motion animation. Gosh, like I it's just that it's just that kind it. of monotonous job that I feel I would be really good at. <laughs> like it's just like okay, well you're just gonna make this guy walk down this, this uh the set. It's gonna take you three weeks to do, <laughs> and you can only move him like a fraction of a millimeter, and be like, I can do that. Like, wait, can Damn. I listen to music in or podcasts while I do this? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> like oh, yeah. I, I, I don't know what it is about like just monotonous jobs. I'm, I'm really good at, and as long hmm. as I can listen to music and uh, like have something going on in my ear, yeah, I can freaking do it. <laughs> Reach out to like. I'm sure they'd love to hire people like you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, are you good at doing boring stuff for long periods of time? <laughs> Bitch, yeah. <laughs> 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 so right. we we took a long turn from Casper. <laughs> we we did. So let's uh I mean, do you have anything else to say about Casper? He's a friendly ghost. He he is a friendly ghost. All right, moving on to another uh baby Yoda pop or the child, whatever the hell you want to call him. Uh this will be a Funko Club exclusive, so a GameStop exclusive. Yeah. Uh, and it is the child holding what Caleb knows. So it's that for those of you that have seen the Mandalorian, he is. Ho- it looks like he's holding that little knob that the Mandalorian gives him from the ship, and it's freaking adorable. For a and second, I thought it was R two D 2s head. What the <laughs> shit? I don't know how dark the Mandalorian goes. <laughs> You need to watch it, because this is like in the second episode, I think. Oh, shit. Okay. But it's freaking adorable. You need to tag Untrained Eye in that one. Okay. I will. Because <laughs> they're... They, we, uh, we got a shout out from them in their most recent episode talking about all the oh, child yeah. pops that they have. Hell and they're yeah. like, yeah, thanks to the All Bros. <laughs> <laughs> So tag them and be like, next for your collection. But they're probably going to hear this before they see the Yeah, probably. Damn, before they see the damn figure. So surprise, we're, post- we're tagging you in a poster later today. Yeah, sorry. If you're watching this when it comes out. Yeah. Even though I've sucked the past two weeks, I'm really sorry about that. Oh, yeah, you haven't been doing that. Yeah, I'm sorry. What the shit, man? I'm sorry. I, po- <laughs> I apologize. This week. It's starting back up, and I promise it will never. This will never happen again. I truly apologize. All right. My word is my bond. <laughs> All right. Uh, and I think that's it, actually. All right. Yep, that is all. Yeah, that is it for Funko Pops. Oh, uh, really quickly. Uh, so Barnes and Noble is having a really good sale for anyone that is uh. Interested in getting uh, good deals on commons and exclusives, two for ten dollars. So that is not a bad deal. So what they're saying, I think, is um, that Barnes and Noble is probably going to be cutting down their Funko section like drastically because of the sale. Ooh. Yeah, because when fun- is that sale? So uh, I think it's actually all month long. This month? Yeah. Breaking A, dude. Yeah, so Barnes & Noble having pop sale, two for $10. Rumors of Barnes & Noble not having a large collection and footprint anymore. I... Hell, there might actually be some figures that I might want from there. Uh, so I see a hunt in our future. Yes, I'm down. Anyway... We'll, we'll record that one, because <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we are so shitty at making videos. We really are. 
<laughs> but uh, the way that Barnes and Noble works now, because I went there uh, to see if they had any of the Criterion movies that I was looking for, didn't have either of the ones that I wanted, so I had to order them online. Um, but uh, so face masks are required, and they do not want you to touch anything unless you have the um, intention to buy it. Fair enough. I mean, we barely touch anything. As yeah, a... no, no, I agree. But just, just a heads up. Yeah, and uh, like. <sighs> Even with the way that they stack their Funkos, like you can see everything. Yeah, yeah, so, so yeah, so it shouldn't be a bit big no. issue. No, not at all. All right, so since there is no sneak peeks or what's in the box, what do you say we move on to uh, our main event of the evening? I say let's do it. All right. Time for the main event. It's main event time. Let's play game. All right, so before we uh, break down, like I said, uh, Caleb and I's favorite movie of 2020, Fantasy Island. Good hell, stop <laughs> saying that. People are going to believe us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got a couple answers from our bros. Caleb, as he always does because he's such a good sport. <laughs> Posted a Gosh, question. You don't know how close you are to getting stabbed. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, you won't. <laughs> uh, who's seen more horror movies here? I know all the tricks of the trade. Bullshit! That's a freaking movie, <laughs> asshole! Uh, Alright, anyway, so Caleb an- asked a question on all of our social media platforms, and uh, we got a couple responses. So, Caleb, would you like to read those to us? Yes, I would. So, the question that I asked... <laughs> what the shit was that? Nothing. It didn't break. The handle. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Um, so, the question that I asked was more of a scenario. I asked, or I said, you are sent to Fantasy Island. What is your fantasy experience? And we got a few responses. So starting off on the Instagram from at table table table. You're turning into me. Yeah, right. Dude, whatever you got is contagious. <laughs> <laughs> I got a reading with Rose Itis. <laughs> anyway, so starting off with at tab. tab what the shit, dude? <laughs> you got Rose at nineteen. Yeah. <laughs> Good hell. At Table Dragger. <laughs> uh which is the the second podcast that our good friend DJ at Untrain I does. Hey. Uh he said Joe Rogan wants to be on my podcast. Okay, I feel bad who's Joe Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, have you watched a UFC fight? No. You haven't? Like, uh, any UFC fight? Nope. Oh, that's who he is? Um, oh, shit, shit, shit. Um, do you... Re- I'm not sure if this is the guy. You remember the the shitty boyfriend from Zooland, or Zookeeper? I've never seen Zookeeper. Are you freaking serious? <laughs> Gosh damn it. The one with Kevin James? Yeah, I've never seen that. I swear we saw that together. No, uh uh-uh. If we did, I don't remember it. Okay, I don't know what else he's freaking in. Yeah, I I, I (laughs) do not recognize him. I'm sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, well, he is one of the the most popular podcasts ever. Oh. So. Well, hey, I feel he should be honored if he was ever asked to be on your podcast. Damn straight. Yeah. Yeah. So next we got a response from the coach Vic. So our oh, good friend Victor good. at Crash and Taz's movie seller. I don't want to hear his fantasy. You don't want to hear his <laughs> no, fantasy. No, I don't. <laughs> Something to do with Spider Man. Uh fun. actually no. Shocker. Yeah, so he said that his fantasy would be endless wings from Wingstop, sushi of all sorts, beer and all other varieties of alcohol, weed. Any strain I want, ready to be rolled into a joint or smoked in a pipe, and people to massage me at my leisure. Huge IMAX screen and surround sound to play any movie I want, 
and the big one, Endless Dr. Pepper. Hey, Vic, can I steal your fantasy? <laughs> <laughs> Minus the uh, the alcohol, the weed. Yeah, I think that's it. I'll take everything else, though. You want the wings and sushi? Yeah, and especially the Dr. Pepper. Dude, I thought you were about <laughs> to say, especially the people ready to massage me. <laughs> <laughs> that's a close second. A close but... <laughs> second? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so, I mean, with me, I mean, say minus beer and weed, but, and minus the Dr. Pepper, that sounds like a pretty decent deal. Can't believe you don't like Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper is gross. And anyone who says it's not is wrong. (laughs) Bite me. Let's go, bitch. (laughs) Dr. Pepper (laughs) is liquid from the gods. Eh. Eh. Yourself. Yeah, if the gods hate you. You know what? You like Sprite, so you're a basic bitch. <laughs> you know what? That's not that's not difficult. To, that's really difficult to argue. <laughs> Moving over to Twitter. <laughs> uh, so the. I mean, their name on the on Twitter is the number two podcast in the world. Um, at Simmons and More, so the Simmons and More podcast. Uh, they said two chicks at the same time. Respect. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't know what else to say to that. Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, why not? <laughs> um. Then moving on to kind of a response to that and our question. Uh, so from the Media Forest podcast at Media Forest cast, uh, they said, I'll also go with at Earth to Adams, which is uh, one of the hosts of Simmons and More. I am assuming. Let's hope so. Yeah. So I'll also go with at Earth to Adams answer. And then he added, then they leave me some Sandos and Gatorade, GTFO, and leave me, and let me sleep for 15 hours. <laughs> the hell? All right. I like it. Yeah, I feel like the responses we get on Twitter versus the ones we get on Instagram are so vastly different. <laughs> yeah, they really are. Uh, next we got at adulting Donnie, who basic who called us boring <laughs> because we didn't read his full response last Aww, week. Aw, damn! <laughs> and Rude. he said that he would go PG this week, or so he said he'd go PG this week, and then said hashtag boring. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I told him that we are a hard PG thirteen <laughs> podcast. Sometimes we dabble in the soft R. Yeah. Sounds about right. Yeah, and then he said that he's in hard R. (laughs) So. But anyway, his response was uh, that he would be in a poly marriage with Madam Skin, Misty Stone, and Zoe Zeldana. The island has all four seasons, and we spend them snowmobiling and shooting machine guns. All right. Um, I, yeah, I, I don't really have any comments. You for don't that. have any comments? <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, snowmobiling. I've actually you've never been snowmobiling. I haven't either. I've only been skiing. When it comes to like snow sports, yeah, just skiing. I went skiing once, and I'm not very good at it. I'm not either, because the f- once and only time that I went skiing, I twisted my ankle. So, yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I went to go get lessons. They did not give us the little pokey handle things. Oh, that sucks. And I... Actually, I think Bronson, so my youngest brother, pushed me. (laughs) So I fell backwards. (laughs) And I was trying to get myself up. And I started sliding down the hill. And there's a... So you have to put your 
feet in like so you know Mm -hmm. you have to put your feet in the stop position which is just basically pointing them at each other i couldn't do that (laughs) from the position i was in (laughs) so i was just sliding down this hill on my back and i couldn't get my feet up and my instructor was mad at me and i'm like it wasn't my fault (laughs) (laughs) but yeah snowmobiling sounds really fun it does uh shooting machine guns way fun especially with zoe saldano like (laughs) <laughs> you know what's up. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. Okay. Our next response is from the Untrained Eye Pod at Untrained Eye Pod. <laughs> um. So he said. Uh. So he said we we're answering in gifts. Because someone else res- are answered in a gif. Oh. I forget who. I mean, that's one of the best ways to answer, in my opinion. I love answering people in gifts. Yeah, but he posted a gif of a, the dog on the massage bed thing, like the massage pillow, and he's just like sitting and getting his head massaged. <laughs> so I don't know if he wants a dog that is that does that, or if he wants to be in place of the dog, or what. The world may never know. The world <laughs> may never know. <laughs> Um, next response comes from the Victims and Villains podcast at Victims and Villains. Uh, he said, being Batman. Yeah, fair. And he posted a gif of Ben Affleck's Batman. Hell yeah. So I don't know if that's the specific Batman he wants to be, but... If it is, respect, man. Respect. Yeah. Regardless, being Batman, pretty cool. Excellent choice. Yeah, I feel like I would suck as Batman. Yeah, you're telling like, me. Like, I, I, I don't have the coordination to do anything. I don't have the stamina. <laughs> <laughs> Just be like, uh, can you, like, give me a, a break? Like, I, I need water. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone got some bat milk? <laughs> <laughs> Who the hell drinks milk when they're thirsty? I, I, it was the only Batman drink I could think of, okay, that they've actually bat said. Milk. <laughs> gross um and our final response comes from the mouse and weens podcast at mouse and weens they said all the oiled up patrick swayze's fabio's and mr t's that the island can handle (laughs) i don't know why this is so funny but (laughs) all right (laughs) <laughs> okay don't act all embarrassed I'm... patrick swayze's mm. yeah that's true yeah that's true and mr t mm. <laughs> like come on fabio's not really my type i would like Who to the say hell is fabio? i would like okay hold up hold up hold up <laughs> i don't know i feel like we we don't have to explain this but we're going to me and rose are both very much heterosexual. <laughs> yeah. But I feel like there's a small percentage of of gay in us. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm not even going <laughs> to deny that shit. <laughs> and young Patrick Swayze. Sorry, mm. Chris, Chris Pratt for me. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and that is all the <laughs> answers that we got this week. <laughs> So thank you to everyone that submitted a response. We love hearing from each and every one of you. And we hope you continue to answer our questions of the week. See if we become even more gay. (laughs) (laughs) Probably not. I think we're just, we're right at that line where for one degree back or one degree forward, it's just like a hard yes or no. (laughs) I I, I, (laughs) On our preferred sexuality. Fair. Fair enough. Anyway. (laughs) So let's get into the actual main event, which is our Fantasy Island breakdown. Uh, So if you're new to our breakdown system, we have broken movies into eight different categories that we individually grade to come to a final All Bros score. So the seven cat or the eight categories that we grade 
are story, writing, acting, character development, effects, music, costumes, and then we give it our own personal grade at the end. And that gives us our grade school letter grade. And we also talk about the percentage and, and whatnot. Yep. So, with that, let's get started off in our first category, which is story. So, it is time for Reading with Rose. Yeah. Let's see how many screw-ups I get this time. Probably a lot. Shut up. Businesswoman Gwen Olson, former police officer Patrick Sullivan, stepbrothers J.D. and Brax Weaver, and disturbed Melanie Cole win a contest to visit Fantasy Island, a tropical resort where fantasies apparently come true. Upon arrival, they meet the island's keeper, Mr. Rourke, and are taken to their fantasies. J.D. and Brax enter a rave at a mansion. Patrick enlists in a war in honor of his late father. Melanie decides to take revenge on a bully, and Gwen accepts her boyfriend Alan's marriage proposal she rejected many years ago. Patrick is captured by a group of American soldiers and discovers that their commander is his father on his last mission before dying, while Melanie enters an underground room where she tortures her bully, Sloan Madison, by uploading an online video of her cheating on her husband. However, another video reveals that Sloan was kidnapped and taken to the island to perform the fantasy against her will. Melanie saves her from a mass surgeon when, whom she recognizes as Dr. Torture, a fictional character she had designed as a child, and they run away. As night falls, both are attacked again by Dr. Torture before he is killed by Damon, a private investigator living on the island. Damon takes them to a cave where he explains that the fantasies are created by the spring water under the island's heart, a glowing rock that shows a person's deepest desires. After revealing that Rourke mixed the water with his guests' drinks, Damon explains that he came to the island to investigate until Rourke offered him a wish to see his deceased daughter. Unfortunately, his fantasy turned into a living nightmare that trapped him on the island after he rejected it. The trio collect some spring water and continue to the resort to find a phone. Gwen wakes up in the present to discover that she has a daughter with Alan. When she is reluctant to continue, Rourke appears and reveals that he has his own fantasy, which is to be with his deceased wife, and it will be fulfilled as long as he grants his guests their fantasies. Gwen manages to convince Rourke to change her fantasy by persuading him that he will continue to see his wife. However, Fantasy Island begins to turn the other fantasies into living nightmares as J.D. and Brax are attacked by a drug cartel associated with the mansion's owner, while Gwen is taken to the night is taken to the night she accidentally caused a fire that killed her neighbor Nick Taylor. She tries to rescue Nick but falls unconscious in the fire, only to be rescued by Rourke's personal assistant Julia. Gwen also realizes that all the other guests except Melanie were there that same night. At the same time, Patrick attempts to leave the island with his father, but he is called to rescue some hostages, who turn out to be J.D. and Brax in the mansion. The soldiers kill the cartel, but they reanimate as zombies and murder J.D. and the rest of the soldiers. Patrick's father sacrifices himself so that his son and Brax can escape back to the resort. Melanie and Sloane are ambushed by a now-zombified Dr. Torture until Damon leaps over a cliff with him, killing them both. Arriving at the resort, Sloane calls her husband and convinces him to call Damon's military associates. The remaining survivors regroup at the resort, but are cornered by Rourke, who reveals that the guests are part of someone else's fantasy in which they are all killed. Realizing that everyone was involved in Nick's death, the guests deduce that this is Julia's fantasy, believing that she was Nick's mother. The guests escape to the dock to be rescued by a plane sent by Damon's associates, only for it to be shot down by the cartel. The group runs to the cave to destroy the glowing rock with a grenade that Brax is carrying. While searching, the survivors are confronted by manifestations of their personal demons, but they regroup and find the rock. Suddenly, Melanie stabs and wounds Patrick before taking Sloan as a hostage. Melanie reveals that this is her true fantasy, having orchestrated everyone's arrival to seek revenge on them for the death of Nick, with whom she was supposed to have a date on the night he died. It is also revealed that Julia is actually Rourke's wife, reappearing without knowing him as part of his fantasy, and that if he did not fulfill each guest's fantasy, including Melanie's, he would lose her again. 
Julia begins to die once again, but before disappearing, recognizing him, she convinces Rourke to let her go and help his guests to escape from the island. Reminded by Rourke that she can have a fantasy fulfilled, Sloane fantasizes Melanie being together with Nick. This causes Melanie to be attacked by Nick's zombified corpse, which drags her into the water. Before drowning, she detonates the grenade against the survivors, but Patrick sacrifices himself by falling on it to protect the others. The fantasy concludes, and Gwen, Sloane, and Brax wake up at the resort, discovering that Patrick died as a hero, while a now-purified Rourke finally agrees to let them go. As the survivors board a plane to leave the now-purified Fantasy Island, Brax wishes for JD to come back to life and go home. Rourke explains that Brax must remain on the island for his fantasy to come true. As Gwen, Sloane, and JD depart on the plane, Rourke asks Brax to be his new personal assistant and to take on a nickname. Remembering a nickname that his brother gave him at school, Brax chooses to call himself Tattoo, initiating the 1977 television series events. <sighs> that was a mouthful. I felt that was longer than it needed to be. It was a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> so, the beginning, so the first portion, the thing that ruins this story for me is the ending. Yeah, The same. ending freaking blows. It's so stupid. All of a sudden, oh, this is my fantasy. I wanted to kill you all because I didn't get to see the guy that I thought was going to be the man of my dream. They, and yeah, they went on one date, too. Freaking, what? What's her name? Melanie? Yeah, yes. Yeah, so... Yeah, Melanie. Like we said, Melanie dated this dude, went out on one date when this, with this guy, kind of hit it off, went, and so they agreed to have a second date. He did not show up because he had died in a fire. She found all the people that were involved, and that her fantasy was to make them pay for it. So, such a stupid fantasy. Such a stupid fantasy. You can have anything and you want, and you want revenge. Okay. On someone you went on a date you... with once. Yeah. You crazy bitch. <laughs> but it's just the the issue that I have with the, this is they. I feel like they could have made this ending work had they not tried to shove it into the last 15 minutes. Yeah, seriously, though. It felt like this... Like, I told you after I watched it, I feel like this movie has, like, five endings. Ser seriously, like, honestly, like, when, uh, before they entered the cave, when they, uh, you know, like, get onto the dock, and the plane starts coming out, like, okay, so, you know, the movie's gonna end. And then all of a sudden, here comes another, like, freaking 30 minutes, and I'm just like... When the hell does this movie end? Yeah, exactly. Like, once they figured out... Like, I could have forgiven that they thought Melanie was going to die. Or no, that Melanie... Or that they thought Julia was Nick's mother. Yeah. Which wouldn't have made a whole lot of sense. I, I assumed that that was... That she had some sort of relation to Rourke. So it would have made sense that they thought it was Julia, but it ended up being Melanie. Yeah. And then the whole like, like once she once uh Sloane, what Melanie's bully, got her fantasy, which was for her and Nick to be together, it should have been that. That's basically should have been the end of the film. The yeah. way that they ended, I know that that ending sounds so abrupt, but and it was, but. That would have been it. That yeah. would have been a damn near perfect ending. Just the way that they ended it. But no, Melanie had to somehow... Finding Nemo her her way of breathing... And then comes out with a grenade. Throws the grenade. And then the freaking cop jumps on it. It's just like, what? Yeah, I, I, I don't know And then just a say. bunch of extra crazy shit and you're just like what the then, shit yeah and then the whole brax decides to stay on the island so his so jd can live on I'm like oh okay yeah like stop <laughs> yeah it's, it's it, he should have been like i have nothing left to go to like that that's what the ending should have been been brax considering getting on the plane realizing i have nothing left like, I don't have, like, they, he should have made Brax and JD orphans. 
And then him, and then once JD died, then Brax being like, I have nothing. Like, I have nothing to go to, nothing. And then Rourke being like, I invite you to stay on this island and be, like, my assistant. And yeah, then him I being like, okay. Like, that would have made sense. Like, giving him some sort of purpose. Yeah. But no, they had to be like, oh, well, you know, if you stay, I can bring your brother back to life. Yeah, it's like, how do you even know the island's going to honor that? Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> like I said, this this movie has, like, five different endings, and it's so stupid. Have, have you ever seen the TV show? I have not seen the TV show. I kind of want to see how it is now. Yeah. Because I know it's more of, like, a drama series, but I want to see if that works better than a horror movie. Yeah. That would be an interesting thing to learn. Yeah. But, yeah, so... Brax, he gets his nickname, Tattoo, because he has a tattoo of the word Tattoo. Yeah, and then I guess that leads into the show. And, yeah, and then Rourke set, starts calling him Tattoo, because he says Brax is a weird name, which I thought was so weird. That's more of a writing issue than anything, so how I'm going to Brax, duck it. Oh, I don't how get is how Brax Br- weirder than Tattoo? Yeah. <laughs> Cause I've I I've met some people that are named Braxton. So yeah, yeah, exactly. And how like Brax B R A X? It's not that hard. Cause no. he was talking about having to get him a name tag, and he's like Brax. That's a weird name. It's no, not. It's not. <laughs> I mean, not any weirder than tattoo. At least it's not weird out here in Utah. It might be weird in other states. Maybe, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's so. It's hard because they told, from the beginning, they told a f- fairly compelling story. And it worked. Yeah, it did. Up until a point. Yeah, and then it's just the last, what'd you say, half hour? Yeah. Is just a cluster of what in the hell is going yeah, on. Yeah, the last half hour just destroys this movie. Yeah, which is super shitty. Because if they would have just stuck with one ending and not try to cram like five, if they weren't trying so hard to make Fantasy Island tie into the show, I feel it would have worked a lot better. It, it absolutely would have. Like that, make along with own all the thing. crazy ass endings, just <laughs> stop. And also, okay, if it's tying into the show. That so this is supposed to take place before the show, is that what they're saying? I'm assuming so. Um, yes. Yeah. How the hell does that work when uh she's using an iPhone, and all this shit? the The series takes place in the 70s. Yeah. So um. And let alone that, tattoo isn't even the right type of person. Did you look into the show? I didn't. Uh-huh. So the so tattoo. In the show is actually a little person. Oh, okay. So, okay. So he's uh, the main guy's uh, like assistant. Yeah. Okay. And his whole thing is announcing when the plane arrives. Oh. So, okay. but, so that's kind of why I felt Julia had a weird deal at the beginning when she was running and being like the plane, the plane. Now it makes sense. Yeah. Which. Which I, what I read is that that's kind of tattoos in the show. That's kind of his mo. He runs and says, "The plane, the plane." Hmm. All right. And I felt it was super weird for Julia <laughs> to do it, but again, writing issue. <laughs> There's so many different things that they that I had issues with, and it's all because of the ending. Yeah. Had they not done what they did with the ending, it would have worked really well. Melanie, her fantasy was to torture her childhood bully Mm -hmm. or her high school bully. Which, I mean, I wasn't bullied to that kind of extent, but everyone was. Get over it! Seriously, (laughs) like, you were harass that bad that you want to pull some saw shit on yeah no joke and then she records herself 
and it th- th- that's the issue. I c- so with the ending and her turning out to have pulled everyone in. The dialogue that she has before the be, before she starts recording makes it seem like she has no idea what's going on. That's that she true. Is, actually believes that this is fake. Yeah. And then once she starts recording, then I could believe her getting into some like, oh no, shit. She's like po- trying to faker. like play a part. Yeah. Like I could see that when she was recording, but before. It was confusing to her. She even stopped and was still asking, what the hell is going on? To herself. That makes zero sense to me. Yeah, no, I completely agree. If this was your master plan, you should have just come down and, like, that would have been a great time to reveal that she knew all along. Ooh, yeah, that would have. And then you could have seen her playing this part, and then you're just like, oh, shit, like, people need to figure this out. And then, like, then reveal her motivation for this. Then reveal this. Then reveal that. And that would have made more sense than just, like, like her relationship with Nick came out of freaking nowhere. It really did. Like, uh, yeah, when they when she announced, like, oh, he was the man of my dreams and you guys burned out. I'm like, where the hell did this plot come from? Yeah, and Brax freaking nailed it. You went out with him once. Yeah. <laughs> Brax was honestly, I think, my favorite character besides Michael Pena. Same. Michael Pena freaking nailed this. Yeah, he was he was the oh, he was fantastic in this movie. Uh, he Yeah, he honestly is one of the, the people that just <sighs> He can they, save any movie. He he can. <laughs> the rest of the cast were trying real hard to tear this movie down. Yeah. But acting. Um yeah. story wise. Like I said, the ending just rips the beginning to shreds. Yeah. It had such a strong opening. Yeah, it did. It had a strong... How long is this movie? An hour 40? Yep. Yeah, about that. It had such a strong hour and 10 minutes. (laughs) And then just gets shredded to pieces by the final part. It's just... It's disappointing. It, It really is. It really sucks. So, where are you at? Because I'm fairly I, low. I'm like solid 60. That's about where I'm at, too. Really? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it sucks. It does. It sucks because it's just... You can't grade the story as a whole. Like, I can't give it points for how good it was for the first three, like, four-fifths of the movie. Yeah. You have to grade it as a whole. Yeah. And it's just when the story sucks, it sucks. Yeah. And it blows, because if you would have just cut off that last half hour, it would have been solid. It really would have. All right, moving on to writing. Not that good either. Nope. You ca- okay? The dialogue was was it wasn't awful. Y- yeah. Okay, I'll give you that. It wasn't. I'm trying to think of like the biggest issues that I had with like um... the just the dialogue in general, like. It, I think the biggest issues I had were was at the ending. Yeah. The mm-hmm. ending is where the acting just plummeted. The writing just plummeted. So overall, I th- I do think the writing's higher than the story. By a lot or no? not by a lot. Okay. I mean, I I'd say like 65 I'm more in like the seventies, cause with the okay. right with the writing, you can grade. Like it's different than grading the story as a whole, cause the story True. is beginning to end, and like I said, the ending yeah. ruins the beginning. That's true. So it's just kind of like you have to clump that all together. Yeah. Writing, you can take individual pieces. So it's just that that last half hour that yeah. sucks, where the writing's just like. 
wait, what? Like, I found myself saying, wait, what? A lot. <laughs> think, honestly, the thing about all the writing for Michael Pena, it's definitely making it go up for me. Yeah. So I'm like in the low 70s for it. Maybe like being super nice, I'm at like 73. I was thinking 72. 72? Yeah. I, can, I can give you 72. Okay. Like I said, being giving it a 73 is being super nice. <laughs> All right, next up we got acting. Okay, who do we want to grade? Uh, this one's tough. We definitely need to do Michael Pena. Yeah. I don't feel like Julia was in it enough. That's fair. I mean, we definitely need to do Lucy Hale. Do you remember her name? Yes. Yeah, Lucy Hale. Yeah, so we definitely need to do Lucy Hale, Michael Pena. Um, Should we group, like, the other four into one category? I say yeah. Okay. So we'll be grouping Patrick, Sloan, Brax, and JD. Yeah. Okay. Honestly, they Lucy Hale and Michael Pena were the biggest parts of this film. Yeah, they, yeah. And then it was everyone else kind of clumped together. Yeah. Yeah, that's literally how it was. Like, they all had, like, I feel like they all had equal amounts of screen time. Oh, yeah, they did. The only one that I'm like, maybe we should grade him is Brax. But I, don't know, I still feel we should just stick with, yeah, yeah just clump them and get together. Yeah. All right. So well, let's start off with the, the group, then. Okay, so we'll be grading Maggie Q, Austin Stowell, Portia Dub- Doubleday? Portia. Oh, Portia. Portia Doubleday. Wow. Like, I don't know how I didn't think of that. Uh, Jimmy O. Yang and Ryan Hansen. Yeah, so... You know, for the longest... Um, sorry, just really quickly... Uh, for the longest time, I kept trying to figure out who, uh, por- what movie Portia was in, because I'm like, oh, I recognize her, and I remember she was such a bitch in that movie. Uh, the third Big Mama's House. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we got Maggie Q, who was in the Divergent series. Didn't even make it through the first one, so. She was in Miss- Mission Impossible 3. Never seen it. Uh, live free or die hard. She's in designated survivor. She was in Nikita. So like not anything it. huge. Yeah, I was gonna say I haven't seen any of those. Uh, Austin Stowell was in Whiplash. Ooh, yeah, okay, I do remember him in that movie. Uh, Twelve Strong, and that's. That's all, like, his movies, any TV shows. Nope. Yeah, then Portia Doubleday is from Big Mama's house. Like, Big Mama's, like, father, like, son. Yeah. Um, Then Brax, played by Jimmy O. Yang. He was in Crazy Rich Asians. He's in Space Force. Uh, Lego Movie 2. Really? Yeah. Life of the Party. Happy Time Murders. Oh gosh, let's not talk about that movie. <laughs> uh, then his brother, JD, was played by Ryan Hansen. He was in the Veronica Mars series. Uh, Two Broke Girls. Central Intelligence. Chips. Bad Teacher, Bad Santa 2, Friday the 13th, 2009, Um, Unicorn Store, G.I. Joe Retaliation, and that's it for him. Oh, yeah, I remember who he was in Bad Santa 2. He was uh, the uh, rich asshole that uh, owned the the, um, charity place. (laughs) Yeah, so that's all of our... Our guests that we're going to clump together. Um, I do feel like the one that did the best out of all of them was Brax. Yeah. Oh, hands down. 
followed really closely by JD. Yeah, he was pretty good, actually. I actually really liked, um, what was her name? Is uh, it Maggie or Portia? Yeah, no, Maggie Q. I don't know. I, I liked her. Oh, shit. <laughs> I liked her uh, storyline and the fact that she was, she felt that she didn't deserve uh, that life of, you know, having a husband, having, you know, a daughter, but yet that's like, she's dreamed of that, like, ever since she can remember. But to her, she didn't deserve it. She felt that she wanted to try to fix a mistake that she made. Yeah. Fortunately, she couldn't, but. Yeah, that's. That's a weird thing about Fantasy Island, I feel. It is. It's just. She played the system. She did. Like, she totally played. So, she went in wanting her fantasy to be having this life that she always wanted. Husband, kids, blah, blah, blah. And then she, like, manipulated it. Because one of the stipulations of Fantasy Island is everyone gets only one fantasy. Yeah. And so, she, like, changed it saying that she wanted to... The way that she justified it was so weird. How did she justify it? I forgot. I I don't even understand it. After I rewound it and watched it again, and I still don't fully understand it. Hmm. It's she oh. wanted I have no freaking clue, dude. <laughs> I have no idea how she cheated the system. Hmm. But she did and she changed her fantasy to wanting to try and save Nick from the fire or whatever. Yeah. Hell, do you even know how she started the fire? Oh, didn't she say she was like making a, like a cup of tea and I guess the kettle caught on fire or some shit like that? I think it had something to do with tea. That's what I remember. Mm. That's stupid. <laughs> it's very stupid. But... Yeah, but overall, I did enjoy her i did enjoy her story um janky at times definitely like i felt her her performance when she like had the family was super weird it was like odd i mean how would i mean but the question is how would you react it's not necessarily like her reaction it was just It was almost, I don't even know. It was like she was almost too comfortable with it. Okay. Like, I feel like that was my issue. It felt like she was, she kind of jumped into it. And then it got into like a weird place. And then the ending with her freaking sucked. (laughs) But, yeah, JD brought it, brought it up. Oh, what about Patrick? Patrick was adequate yeah i I felt his performance was the weakest it really was like seriously i like salome better than him yeah like if i had to rank these it would definitely be brax at top jd sloan matt or then maggie q and then patrick what is her name in this i forget yeah she's kind of a forgettable character gwen gwen yeah yeah then Gwen, then Patrick. Okay. Yeah, he brought it down a lot. His performance was not good. It really wasn't. Like, honestly, the guy who played his dad did a better performance than he did. Right? <laughs> and that's... Like, I hate saying that, I, too. No, I do, too. I don't feel... It doesn't fill me with, like, the warm fuzzies, but it's just... Yeah, I hate shitting on actors. Yeah, it's just... I don't know. Like, I felt that the guy that played his dad brought was... They were on different levels, and it showed. Yeah. (laughs) Like, seriously, though. Bad. Like, one of them was doing a really good job. One of them was doing a really poor job. Yeah. (laughs) And it's just... (laughs) For some reason, I don't know why, but when he goes to cover himself uh, up uh, with the grenade to save everybody, I got Child's Play 3 vibes. Remember when Whitehurst did that? Yeah. <laughs> Whenever someone does that, I get Child's Play 3 vibes. Oh my gosh. Yeah, dude, I... Yeah, yeah Patrick, I, I didn't like Patrick. Mm. But, anyway. <laughs> so, 
where where are you at with acting overall? With so them? considering Patrick does bring it down for me, grouping them all together, uh, I'd say like a solid seventy four. Seventy four. Yeah. That's about where I was at. I was at 75, but 74 is more than fair. <laughs> All right. All right. Next up, we got Lucy Hale. She was good up until the ending. Yeah. The ending ruined it for her. And I, it's not it's not acting. I feel it's more so writing. Yeah. Because I think Lucy Hale, is, she's actually a very good actress. She is. She is super good. Um, What has she been in? I know she was in... Pretty Little Liars. Yeah, I feel that's what she's most known for. Yeah, she's also in Truth or Dare. Still haven't watched that. Uh, Scream 4. Oh, shit. Who does she play in Scream 4? Oh, yeah. I think she's just one of uh, the friends. At least I think so. Oh, no. She's uh, the one of the girls at the beginning. That's what I remember her for, and I loved her in that opening. <laughs> Yeah, and then in a couple other things. Not really big things that we would know. But she kind of seems to find her niche in uh, horror. I mean, I feel it's a really good genre to get into. Yeah, I feel like horror would be really fun to act in. It really would. You know what, I was watching, sorry, really quick. So, um, yesterday was the... uh, anniversary date of a uh, Halloween H2O. And so of course I had to watch it. Um, and I didn't realize this when I was a kid, but watching it now, it is amazing how many times they switch from mask to mask in the movie. <laughs> Cause one, one instance, it will be the one with like the big eye holes. And then it will be one that, uh, was using like promotional shots. It, it's weird as hell. And then don't get me started with the CGI mask. Um, <laughs> But, yeah, I'm just like, pick a damn mask. Like, shit. Huh. It shouldn't be that freaking hard. And it shouldn't because I actually really like the one with the split eye- eyeballs, like the really wide one. But apparently they didn't. But, yeah. Sorry, I just had to touch upon that because, like, it's really – it's – being older, it is so much more clear how much they <laughs> – how many freaking masks they used in that movie. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Yeah. So, like you said, I don't think the acting was her fault. The The only time I had an issue with her was once the reveal that she was the one that plotted all this yeah. happened. But other than that, I thought she was fantastic. Yeah, I agree. So, where are you at? I'm... I don't know if I want to say a solid 80 or like a little higher than that. What are you thinking? I was actually a little lower than 80. Oh, shit. Okay. Or so. Like 78? I mean, if you're thinking she deserves higher than than 80, I can meet you at 80. Okay, let's go 80. Yeah? Yeah. All right. And then last up, we got Michael Pena. The star of the show. Hell yeah. (laughs) And just because he was the star, it just... I didn't mean that literally. Yeah, I, like, I know. It's just, <laughs> just because he was the star doesn't mean it was his... He was definitely the best. Yeah. But it just doesn't... It doesn't mean he's, like, anywhere near the 90s. No. Honestly, I, I don't know. I'm thinking, like, a solid 85 for him. I might be a little bit lower. Just because okay. I didn't completely buy that the love relationship with Julia. Okay, yeah, bringing that up, yeah, that definitely brings me down too. Yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> so I'm at like 83. I can totally give you that. <laughs> All right, so that averages out to a 79. Not bad. Yeah, definitely not bad. All right, character development. Again, this is an, an issue that we have with horror movies. Well, I feel actually with uh, you can actually grade Michael Pena because uh, he finally decides to let Julia go. Um, he decides to actually like 
help the guests, not just let uh, the fan or the uh, the island carry out the the fantasy in, in its entirety. So I fair enough. I feel he Michael, did give up his fantasy. Yeah. So honestly, it actually, does have character development. Okay. So for grading that, because I don't think the people themselves had that much no. development. No. I think they were s- still the same people by the time they left. I mean, I or feel died or whatever. I mean, um, what was it? I I'm gonna remember her name. Was it Rebecca? <laughs> I mean, Gwen. Was it or Gwen? Portia? No, not Portia. Gwen. Yeah. Gwen. Uh, if I don't know, she some she didn't really have a lot of character growth, but kind of like how I pointed out earlier, you know, she was willing to give up a fantasy that, you know, she's been dreaming of since before she can remember. Yeah, in the most bullshit way. <laughs> I that's what I hated about it. It was just a bullshit way to get a new fantasy. Fair. <sighs> but whatever. <laughs> but the, I mean, you do get to learn a little bit about Rourke throughout the movie. I don't think his arc was super great, though. It wasn't. I mean, let's face it: no horror movie arc, character development wise, is that great. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I'll say it's a little bit better than other horror movies all right i can give you that but i'm in like maybe the high 70s for it that i'm honestly thinking like a solid like 75 76 deal <laughs> <laughs> all right next up we got effects the effects uh, weren't bad they were well, they weren't yeah i think the biggest issue was the bleeding like the, yeah the, the whole like the black, black yeah. yeah that was that was weird yeah it was an odd choice i think you could have just gotten away with giving them black eyes yeah like paranormal activity yeah um but honestly i feel that would have been scarier yeah it, it would have been way scarier <laughs> and it would have made them feel more like zombies too yeah. like i felt like i don't even know how i felt about the the bleeding eyes like i felt it was just it was an odd choice it, it really was like yeah. it kind of gave me like wet zombie vibes <laughs> and that's uh, yeah that's that's something that you don't want yeah you don't want wet zombies <laughs> no you do not doesn't sound like a good time nope so other than that everything else was pretty decent it was I'm trying to think of like if there's I mean, anything like, that stood out, but do you feel like uh like with the whole apartment fire? Do you feel that looked pretty, pretty good, pre- pretty realistic? That looked pretty decent. Yeah, that did look pr- pretty pretty good. I I can agree. Um, I think maybe this is definitely the saving grace of the movie. Kind of, that's really sad. Yeah, I'm a, I'm. Hmm. Maybe high 80s? Low 90s? I can give you high 80s. High 80s? Yeah, like 88? 88's fair. Okay. 88 is definitely fair. <laughs> Alright, next up we got music. Fair? Which is uh, fairly average. Yeah, I nothing really stuck out to me. Yeah, not nothing to me either. Yeah. I'm thinking like 6. That's about where I was at too. Yeah. All right, next up we got costumes. Saving Grace, Michael Pena's white suit. <laughs> Fair. That definitely does put it above average. Yeah. Uh, Everyone else's was like, yeah, yeah it was okay. basic. Yeah. Um, I did really like Dr. Torture's outfit. Okay, yeah, his was cool. It doesn't bump it up anymore, but... <laughs> Like, overall, like, I think it's maybe... He, did, he definitely looked intimidating. Yeah. So, like, I think w- the combination of Mr. Rourke's with Dr. Torture's suit or outfit bumps it up to, like, a 7 for me. <laughs> yeah, I can give you 7. Yeah, everyone else was just kind of in basic clothing. Um, 
Patrick was in a war outfit. Kind of bugged me that it didn't match everybody else's. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, way to freaking set him up for failure, yeah, Rourke. Seriously. All right, finally, we got our own personal grade for this, and I have a feeling we're going to agree. <laughs> yeah, well, okay, yeah. All right, uh, do you want me to go first? Or you want to go? Uh, I think I went first last week, so yeah. Okay. So overall, uh, beginning, good. Middle, good. Ending just sucks so freaking bad. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, uh, Michael Pena is definitely one of the saving graces of this movie. The, most of the cast is the saving grace of this movie, I feel. Um, but overall, like it's not a movie I really have any plans to revisit anytime soon. Yeah, um, it, the concept is cool. It really is so cool. It's just the execution. Yeah. Um, I'm solid sixty five. Sixty five. Yeah, that is exactly where I was thinking. <laughs> really? Yeah, like that is the exact number I had in my head. Hell yeah! Where does that? Yeah, that I'm on the sync. same team. the The concept intrigued me, like the thought of. Just it twisting your fantasies, your your dark fantasies into something like this. It, it's it's intriguing. It is. Absolutely. And they were off to such a good start. And like you said, the, the beginning was just, it captured you. Mm -hmm. And the middle, it was so good. Like once everyone got into their fantasies, you're just like, oh, shit's going to hit the fan. I would have much preferred to just see the natural conclusion. I would have too. Seriously, though. <laughs> yeah, like having Patrick have to just accept that his father's going to die. Yeah. Have Gwen kind of basically try to deal with this life that she feels like she doesn't deserve. Get to a point where she does. Or where she does feel like, oh, I, I can have this. And, like, obviously the fantasy will go away, like, when they leave. But it's just, like, have her have that realization that I can have this. This isn't real, but I can have this in my life. And then you could have had the dark, twisted shit with with Melanie. Yeah. And just being like, oh, no. Like, I goofed. And, like, maybe still having the, the I'm saving my childhood bully and basically just trying like getting to a point of forgiveness with her and then i i don't know what you could have done with brax and jd but well i guess you could have still had the the gangsters coming in and being like trying to attack them yeah and still had but would that you still have had jd die if you're wanting to end it like the mood or the show starts you kind of have to. Yeah, that's that's true. That's a good point. So I would say yes. I okay. would still have JD die. Okay. Just because, like, you you have to have stakes in a movie like this. You it's have to have stakes do. in horror. Yeah. And I feel like that would have been the stakes. Like, I think you could have also killed off Patrick if you wanted to, just so you know that that's the net. Like, maybe saving the life of his dad. Yeah. And then, like, Ooh, that, that could have been the natural conclusion. And then, like, when he's just, like, struggling for life, you just kind of see the dad fade away. And then lifeless Patrick. That would have actually been really cool. Yeah. But they had to end it so shitty. <laughs> but no, we got this. Yeah. <sighs> so, yeah, I, I'm at a very, very solid 65, <laughs> along with you. Uh, which... Brings us to our final grade for Fantasy Island. So it has come to a a C. I actually thought it would be lower than that. Okay. Yeah. I'll take it. It's it's a fair. It's a stronger C. So it is sitting at a a seventy four point three percent. All right. Not bad. Yeah, so the cutoff for C is 73%. So it is 1.3% oh. higher than uh, our lowest C. Okay. So, I mean, not bad. Yeah, not bad at all. Uh, Puts it in the same 
vein as Venom. Oh, okay. I may have liked Venom a little bit better. I definitely did. Uh, Ant Man and the Wasp. Oh, I liked Ant Man and the Wasp way better. Yeah, you can thank Dynamic Duel for jacking up our. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. <laughs> Uh, I'm just kidding. We love you. Yeah. Uh, it actually puts it one point, or yeah, one point higher than, or yeah, one point higher than Last Jedi. Okay, that I'm perfectly fine with that. Yeah, same level as Scoob, and my spy. I think I enjoyed Scoob a little more. Than these, than Which these. shows? So Scoob is seventy four point eight, Fantasy Island is seventy four point three. Okay. So it's a thin margin, but what's my spy? My spy is seventy five. Oh, okay. Okay, so we so, enjoyed my spy more than Scoob and Fantasy Island. Yep. Okay. Um, it's lower than Rise of Skywalker by one point. Yes. Lower than the Adams family. All right, fair. Um, yeah, lower than Unfriended. I think I did enjoy Unfriended a little more in this one. And higher than Power Rangers. What? Yeah. Bullshit. <laughs> I I would have sworn Power Rangers was a C plus. Yeah, that's what I thought too. Yeah, because we gave it a five for music. Really? That's what it says. I'm not at a five for music. Seriously, they used part of the original theme in this movie. Yeah. Um. All right, real quick, six or seven. Seven. Okay, so that bumps it up. To a C plus? Uh, no. Damn. It. <laughs> Unfortunately, no. Son of a bitch. Would you still say that it's like a seventy six point five for personal grade? I would actually rank it higher. Costumes, we gave a six, but we docked it because the design of the like the Power Rangers suits wasn't good. Well, see, so this so we graded this separately, right? Uh, and then you combine Power them? Rangers? Yeah. No, I think we graded this one together. I thought we graded these this one separately, and then you combined them. Because cause I remember I liked the costumes, but you hated them. That is true. I forget what we did with Power Rangers. Oh, yeah, that's right. That yeah. is right. We did grade those di- differently. Yeah. Okay, I might have been a little harsh on music then. But, okay, so it comes to a C. Okay. It's at a seventy-five point, basically point two percent. Okay, as long as it beats Fantasy Island. Yeah. <laughs> Which I mean, we don't go back and and change, but that that one that one was it was different. Yeah, it was kind of called for. Yeah, like I would have sworn that that was higher for a really long time. I have to make sure no one can go in and edit these. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that might be a good idea. Yeah, that would suck. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Fantasy Island comes to a C, seventy four point three percent. Not bad. Definitely not bad, uh, especially for this movie. Yeah, that's like, being nice. That's it, generous. It had its saving. It had its saving graces. Yeah. It's just like we said, the story is good until the last half hour. Do you see the percentage of this movie on Rotten Tomatoes? Eight percent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so you're audience? welcome, Fantasy Island. <laughs> <laughs> What's the audience score? A forty-eight percent. They really hated the ending. Yeah, they really. I feel our score is a little bit more fair. It is. I kind of agree with the critics' consensus, though. What? Says Fantasy Island tries to show audiences the dark side of wish fulfillment, but mainly serves as a cautionary tale about the dangers of exhuming long dead franchises. They're not wrong. Mm, I don't know. I feel like you can reinvigorate 
old franchises. You can, but some work, some don't. This could have worked. It could this have. This could have worked so easily. It's just the execution sucked. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. So it's hard for me to get on board with that statement. <laughs> because yeah, the reinvigoration w- could have been amazing. And it was. Yeah. Until it wasn't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fair. All right. Well. That concludes this episode, so if you like this and want to hear more of our breakdowns or different episodes or whatever, you can follow and subscribe to us wherever you listen to podcasts. Uh, we are on every platform that you can imagine. Uh, if you're, if we're not, go to a different platform. <laughs> or message us or DM us on social media. Uh, you and let us know, hey, you're not on this one, and we'll find try. a way to get on it. Yes. Try our best. Yeah, you can catch all of our episodes on YouTube if you want to listen on there, uh, as well as some bonus videos that we will be making. We will be recording. Yes. That this... Barnes & Noble hunt. Yeah. It will be recorded. <laughs> uh, you can also follow us on social media. Uh, we are on Facebook, facebook.com slash thealbros. Twitter and Instagram, our handle is at thealbros. Uh, you can DM us with episode ideas, answer our question of the week. Uh, if you want to join us, like we'd love to have you. Yep. Uh, you can also find all of that stuff on our website, which is tinyurl.com slash thealbros, where you can find a link to our merch store, which is on tpublic, uh, tpublic.com forward slash user forward slash thealbros channel. If you just want to go directly there, it's easier to go to the site. <laughs> But we would love to hear from you guys and love to see if you get any of our stuff. <laughs> um, I think what shit. I'm going to do from now on, because I'm 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 not really good at uploading t-shirt designs weekly. Yeah. What I think I'm going to do is maybe upload them at the end of the month. Ooh, that's a good idea, actually. Yeah, and then you get four or five, depending on how the month goes, five new designs I love each that. month. I love it. Yeah, so I will be releasing some of the ones that I had preloaded on there because I I've been slacking, <laughs> but I'll upload some of those uh, this weekend. So look, oh yeah, this isn't going to come out this weekend. <laughs> this is going to come <laughs> out Monday. They should already be out and at a discounted rate if you want them. <laughs> oh, but. Oh, shit. Un- so next week, um, next week's going to be up in the air. Um, I'm going to be hitting some people up, see if we can get a guest on. Uh, if not, I'm thinking because we haven't done one in a while, either a showdown or a Dreamcast episode. I'm down. Not sure what the subject would be, though, yet. Um, It'd be a surprise for both of us. Yeah. For anyone who listens. Yeah. <laughs> So, with that, you can catch us next week. And until then, this has been the All Bros Podcast. I'm Caleb. And I'm Jonathan. And we'll catch you guys next time. Deuces. So long. Feel it gets worse every week. Yeah, that one was pretty bad. I'm trying here, okay? I'm trying. <laughs>